Hey friends, welcome back to Anchor Homestead. We're at my mom's house today. Hi there, good to see you. We were supposed to do a huge Christmas cooking day together, but we got sick and so we had to postpone that. And then we were supposed to do a big party for my nephew for his birthday. Parents got sick, so we had to postpone that. And now it's my dad's birthday and we're gonna have a huge celebration to kind of com um, combine them together. Yeah. <laughs> we came up with a really fun menu. I brought a bunch of stuff from the garden that we're gonna be incorporating into this dinner because I still am in pantry challenge. So even though my mom bought a lot of these ingredients, I brought over stuff from my house from my garden that needs to be eaten up so we can enjoy that as well. So we are for dessert, we're gonna make a carrot cake for my dad. So we're gonna make the cakes today and the frosting. We're gonna do cream cheese frosting. And for my nephew, we are gonna do a brownie. And what is the name of the ship we're gonna make it into? Um, it's a Star Wars ship. I don't know the name of it. It's round and then it has the wing tails yeah. coming out. And the round part's a regular traditional brownie. And the tails are the gluten, dairy free, vegan ones because that's yeah. what the boys can have. So we'll also be doing two different frostings on it. One they can have for the tails and then one everybody else can have for the round part of the spaceship. We are gonna do potatoes all, potatoes a la gratin. So that's gonna be really good. Unfortunately, I now have used up all my potatoes from the garden, so my mom did buy potatoes for that. We're gonna do a beef wellington. I have, it's frozen, but a beef tenderloin here. This is from the half a cow that I bought. So we're gonna use this to make the beef wellington. And then we were gonna make the puff pastry from scratch and I brought my food processor to do that. But I ran it over in my car this morning and I broke the latch. So I think I can purchase just this part to replace it, but we'll have to see. So I don't know why, but I decided to bring over the leftover puff pastry that I made for Christmas. And we might just go ahead and use this puff pastry, but we have to make all the other components today of the beef wellington. And then we are gonna make a Hasselback butternut squash. These are butternut squash from the garden. And then I brought a ton of garlic from the garden as well that we're gonna to use today. We're gonna to do a vegetable. I'm uh, gonna roast uh, some asparagus that's uh, uh, Pop Pop's favorite uh, vegetable. So I think that's everything. Um, it's gonna be a lot. Oh, we're doing two roast chickens because this party keeps getting a little bigger and bigger. And I think there's gonna be about 18 people. And my roast, my beef roast is pretty small. My mom is going to start on the carrot cake and I am going to start prepping the butternut squash for the Hasselback potatoes and I just washed up the potatoes for the scallop or the potatoes of the gratin which are basically scallop potatoes. I'm glad I'm doing this because this one's starting to get a little bit soft here so I'll just cut that off and these I think are going to be really impressive. I've always wanted to try these um, Hasselback butternut squash since I saw it on YouTube. I'm not going to peel these carrots because they're going to be grated anyway. I gave them a good scrub. My mom has the coolest KitchenAid attachment. I eventually want to invest in one of these. It has several options of blades that you can grate, slice, do all kinds of things. So when I do carrot cake, I use the large grate and I scrub the carrots. I don't bother to peel them. They're just going to be grated anyway and I measure them into here so I can collect it and it's not such a big mess. I'm all about not big messes. So isn't that cool? The cool thing about this is there's no maximum capacity. You all know I use my food processor all the time to grate things, but you have the capacity of how much that food processor can hold. And you can put a huge bowl underneath this attachment and you can just keep going and going and going. So I'm eventually going to invest in one of these and I can link this down below if you're interested in just checking it out. I should probably read the directions on this. It doesn't say to, um, that we have to peel them. Okay, I don't think I was supposed to peel this. Uh, I think Always read your directions before you start. I think so when you look at the picture it looks peeled because when you... Well, maybe not. Oh. Oh well. Should I peel both do you, of them? Do you slice it in half long way? Yeah. Why would you keep the peel on though? Maybe that holds it from falling apart. Oh, maybe. Hmm. Oh well. Just... All right, there we go. Three cups. Okay, to bake this carrot cake, we're going to make a three layer cake, three pans. To do the brownie spaceship, we're making a round one a square one, cutting it 
diagonal to make the wings on the back of the spaceship. Um, I want to show you this great thing I found. I do a lot of birthday cakes. I found this on Amazon. It's a package of, I don't know, 20 or so of three different size circles. So look at how perfect that fits in there. And it has the little uh, tails to take the cake out. I, so no more sticking, no more middle of the cake stays in the pan and the rest comes out. Uh, this is a game changer if you do a lot of baking. I just saw these for the first time today and I was pretty <laughs> impressed. So I can link those down in the description box if you're interested, if you do a lot of cake baking. And lining the pan is your least favorite part because it's my least favorite part. So I'm just de-seeding these and then we're gonna roast them for 15 to 20 minutes. You know, mom, I'm gonna peel this because if you hassle back it, if you cut it. Yeah, I, well I have, a, what do you call it, a chopsticks that you can use so you don't cut it all the way through. Yeah. Maybe that contains the side from breaking and falling apart. If you cut it, you're gonna have the skin on every piece. I'm yeah. peeling it. It doesn't say to peel it. There's nowhere in the directions it says to peel it. So I'm gonna assume we're supposed to peel these. We washed these potatoes, but I'm gonna go through and just cut off any bad spots, and we're gonna leave the skins on. Over the years in making this carrot cake, I've made it several different ways. For a while, my husband liked uh, apricot filling in between the layers, so when you frost it, you make an edge of frosting on the uh, lower level, and then you put apricot jam in the middle, and then you put the next cake layer on top and you use the frosting to make a dam so that the jelly doesn't run out the sides. But my husband said he doesn't like it that way anymore, so he just wants plain. At one time he liked chopped pecans in it, but none of my son-in-laws like uh, nuts in their baked goods. So he always prefers them and we don't get nuts in it anymore. But it's a very adaptive recipe. You can do whatever you like. Oh, and sometimes uh, we, well, twice we tried it with raisins because there no. was a bakery that put raisins in their carrot cake and that was a veto all the way across. Yeah, this mandolin's nice. Yeah, that's probably a better size. Thank you. I will link all the recipes that we are going to be making today down in the description box. This carrot cake is going to be on scratchpantry.com and the rest of the recipes are going to be from ones I found online. I'm adding one and a half cups of oil to the eggs and sugar. I'm supposed to alternate that with the flour. <laughs> I've made this cake a lot. You think I would remember. But it's pretty much a quick bread style cake, not a sponge cake. Uh, on. Yes, it's a pretty dense cake, so I really don't think it's going to matter in the long run. Okay, I'm going to give the, the bowl a scrape and get any uh, remaining dry ingredients off the side. And then I'm going to stir in the carrots and it's about to get a lot thicker. I have an onion. I'm going to do the same thing with an onion and cut it on this mandolin. so much fun. Yeah, that is nice. Cool. Emily said let us know what time dinner, so maybe they are coming. Oh, yay. My sister just had a baby, what, how many days ago? Four? Uh, yeah, four, four. days ago. I uh, made 30th. 30th. I just made her a bunch of freezer meals and brought them over to her yesterday and made, met the baby, Gracie Ray, and she's going to come to dinner tomorrow, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, I just made sure that the papers are completely flat so that my cakes are even and not thinner where there's a bubble. I'm going to divide it in about thirds and pour it in these three pans. I'm getting the cheese grated to make the sauce for the gratin. My mom's just doing a little bit of dishes. I like to tidy as I go so it's not a giant mess at the end. If I can get both the cake and the brownies done, I can have them cool, frost them, decorate them, 
put them out in the garage or in the refrigerator and they'll be perfect for tomorrow and that's one less thing to do tomorrow that's why I want to do them first and while those are cooling we'll probably start on making the components for the beef wellington I've always wanted to make a beef wellington <laughs> my Josh and I like to watch Hell's Kitchen yeah and they you know that's the classic dish on there and so we're going to stretch our cooking abilities a little bit. Beef wellington is puff pastry and then you put a layer of prosciutto and then you make a mushroom. You, you chop up mushrooms really, really fine and you cook them down until it's almost like a paste. You put that down, you wrap the meat in mustard and then you roll that all together and then you bake it. I think I need to read the, the directions. Beef wellington, you have to, you can make the components early but you can't wrap it in layers and assemble it until you're going to put it in the oven because the mushrooms and the uh, ham, whatever the fancy name of it, the prosciutto, uh, will uh, leak moisture into your puff pastry and then it will be soggy. Nobody wants a soggy bottom. No. <laughs> well, I'm going to do, because brownies are one of my son-in-law's very favorite, he likes this better than any homemade I, I'm just not going to compete. So I use this for the round part of the spaceship and then I've got the allergy kids so I'm using this. So I'm going to use the same dishes so I don't have to wash so many. So if I do this one first it's okay to have this batter mixed with this batter but it's not okay to mix this batter with this batter. That's another one. Ask me how I know. My mom does the same thing as I do. She puts her garbage can out when she's doing big cooking days. Just easier that way. This is a huge amount of potatoes, a huge casserole dish. And the recipe that we're following says the potatoes should fit in a two quart baking dish. This is way bigger than two quarts. This is a 15 by, what is this? I don't know, 15 by 14? That doesn't make sense because that would almost be square. Anyway, it's huge. And now I'm going to make the cheese sauce. I'm gonna double the cheese sauce because this feels like a double amount of potatoes. I think a two quart casserole dish is more like a nine by nine. So, no. No? A nine by nine would be one quart. A quart is half. Nine by 13? Yeah, probably. So I maybe instead of doubling the sauce, I will one and one half the sauce. We're gonna do that. So we need then five tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to put five tablespoons of flour. Our sauce is thickened up nicely. Now I turned it off the heat and we're going to add the cheese. I have cheddar and gruyere. I took out the butternut squash and that has to cool a little bit and then we can slice it. I think what would make the most sense, because the recipe said put all the potatoes in the pan and pour the sauce over. Yes, to do half the, the potatoes, pour yeah. the potatoes, yeah. or pour the cheese sauce and then the rest of the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I try to follow the recipes and not go with my instinct. Yeah. And then I kind of regret that decision. <laughs> the whole time my mom and I have been working together, we both are trying to do something at the same time so we're being as efficient as possible. My mom right now is making the gluten-free, dairy-free brownies. These brownies turned out really well. I know that sometimes gluten-free things can be a little bit interesting in their texture and I am surprised to say that these ones were really good. If I didn't explain it earlier, one of my nephews has an egg, soy, sesame, citrus, gluten, and dairy allergy and that is why we usually have to make a couple different desserts or veggie or food options for him.
tomorrow we're going to make some french fries in the air fryer for him and that is one of the reasons why we're doing the chickens as well is because he can eat the chickens. We're going to roast our asparagus with olive oil in the oven so he can have those as well. Now I upgraded some time ago to stainless steel flat side cake pans but what I had for many many years before were just the aluminum ones and I really tried hard not to scratch them and the trick is a plastic knife. See this plastic knife? If you have something you're afraid you're going to scratch, use this plastic knife to loosen the edge. When I took them out of the oven, I cooled them for 10 minutes. And then if you take the plastic knife and you go around the edge, all the way around the edge, and you've got the parchment paper circle, you should be very easily able to do this it comes out completely and there we go the trick for easy release is to leave it in the pan for 10 minutes let it cool go around the edge have a parchment paper and out it comes there we go so this is what makes a hassleback something a hassleback so i go down until i hit the chopsticks this is the first recipe I've ever seen where it says to partially bake before doing this. And I think that's the key because trying to do this when it's raw it would just be very difficult. Squash is so tough when it's not cooked. Yeah. I forgot to get some of the skin off here. Cut that off. Okay. There we go. This is gonna go in the refrigerator covered and then tomorrow we're gonna to bake it again. So you only par bake it, cut it into the Hasselback, and then tomorrow we're gonna to do a sage, garlic, um, peppercorn topping. So it's gonna be kind of a, it's gonna be a savory butternut squash. I don't like butternut squash or sweet potatoes when they have brown sugar on them. I think they're sweet enough. Personally, this is just my preference. I like to make them really kind of like almost spicy, not super spicy, but it's very savory. That's my preference. So you get like sweet, heat, savory, goodness so in the fridge it goes and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start prepping the different components for the beef wellington i'm prepping a ton of garlic shallots and mushrooms for the beef wellington filling and my mom is getting out all the ingredients she needs to make the frosting for both the cake and the brownies cream cheese frosting is my husband's very favorite and the trick Yay. to decorating <laughs> the trick to Decorating a layer cake and having enough to uh, do more than just make it very smooth and thin is double the recipe. You can't have too much frosting. The people who don't like frosting, like me, I just scrape it to the side. But my dad also likes frosting and graham crackers, so whatever is yes, left over. Yes, I, I keep it in the, the leftovers in the freezer or in the refrigerator, and then when he wants a, a treat and I don't have anything, then he spreads them on graham crackers. And it's great to take camping because you can just spread it on graham crackers. In doubling this recipe, it calls for uh, what the equivalent is of almost a full bag of powdered sugar. I'm just gonna use the whole thing. What am oh. I gonna do with half a bag, uh, you know, half a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar? I need to this week go through and peel and preserve all my garlic because there was probably about four cloves that were bad and these ones are starting to sprout and so I gotta take care of them before they before they all go bad. My word, that smells good. Yeah, garlic's amazing. I don't cook with shallots much, and every time I do, I wonder why I don't, because they are so, so good. I am going to attempt to grow shallots in my garden this year, so we'll see how that goes. Can you see that? It is like a cloud. I beat the cream cheese and the butter for, I don't know, probably 10 minutes while we chatted and tidied and she chopped. So I'm adding the vanilla and the salt and going to mix it again. And then I'll add the powdered sugar. My mom's a better person than I. She's sifting her powdered sugar. Well, the reason I do it is so that it comes out of the piping bag and the tips without clogging. If it clogs and you're in the middle of piping something really nice, it's inconvenient. That's true. I don't do very much cake decorating. My mom's got a whole setup over there I'll show you in a minute. I'm no expert though, that's for sure. She does a great job though. Definitely a home baker. 
So I'm chopping the mushrooms and my mom is finishing the frosting. Okay, I have about two thirds of the powdered sugar in the bowl. If I was to turn the mixer on, it would be a cloud. So I'm gonna lay this towel over it, this dish towel, and that will contain the cloud. So I'll beat that for a little bit until it's mostly combined and then I'll finish sifting the last bit of powdered sugar in. Oh, we're supposed to food process it. That would be faster. The mushrooms and shallots were supposed to be chopped in the food processor, but I broke my food processor on the way here. So I'm just doing this by hand and that's okay. It's roadkill. Oh, <laughs> food I was like, kill. the mushrooms are roadkill? No, the food processor. Yeah, it's sad. Flatten it. And I don't have one. I don't have, I have a teeny tiny one, but. Oh, we're supposed to sear the tenderloin. Do you have twine? Uh, yeah, I do. Kitchen twine in that drawer. Okay, so we twine it up, sear it, take the twine off. Look at this frosting. Isn't that a lovely texture? And tastes good too. Speed cooling. I took them outside and put them on the coffee table on the patio. Uh, obviously on dish towels and then on these racks and literally it's not even been 20 minutes and they are cold. Probably could have done it in the refrigerator but my refrigerator is full. When doing layer cakes it's important to put some frosting on the surface that you're going to put your cakes on so that it's secure and it isn't slippery. It, and this is a turnstile. Now if I did this baking a couple of days in advance, I would be wrapping these cooled cakes in saran and putting them in the freezer. Then when I frost them, the crumbs don't come off. It's called uh, crumb coating, but I'm not doing that today because the party's tomorrow and I'm going to get it start to finish today. You'll notice I didn't go all the way to the center or to the outside edges with the frosting because when you sandwich it, and you go all the way to the edge, one la adding one layer isn't very much weight, but when you add the second layer, it's more weight. And if you go the third layer, then the frosting oozes out and then it makes your edges not as smooth. Another trick my mom likes to do is look at the levelness of the cake because a lot of times cakes don't bake completely evenly and you can kind of Tetris them together so that it creates a flat surface on the top without having to cut any of the cake off. She's going to use an offset spatula to frost the sides of the cake. And then she's going to also take a couple skewers and she's going to break them just a little bit shorter than the actual cake. And that is going to help keep the cake stable and not slide around and lean around. And at this point, the brownies are done, so we are going to get those out of the oven and get them cooling so we can get those frosted and we can decorate the Star Wars cake. So the brownies are going to cool for about 10 minutes before my mom takes them out of the pan, and I just turned the stove on with some butter and oil. When you're making the beef wellington, you're supposed to sear the beef before you then take the beef out of the pan and use those drippings to saute the onions and mushrooms or shallots and mushrooms. But the beef wellington is still a little frozen and I don't want to waste this time. So I'm just going to do it out of order. I'm going to saute the mushrooms and shallots and garlic. And then we will sear the beef after that. My mom has a bench scraper and this is where the turnstile comes in really handy is she can turn the cake and use the scraper at the same time. And she just keeps doing this and doing this and doing this until she gets a really smooth surface. It's a lot harder to get a really smooth surface when you're using an offset spatula. We have our pan with butter and oil. We're gonna add all of our mushrooms. It's really important we cook out all the moisture out of these onions and mushrooms before we put them in the beef wellington. We'll use this garlic to put on the rest of the butternut squash. And then I'm gonna add some thyme. Then I'm gonna add a, quite a bit of salt to help draw up that moisture and pepper and then we're gonna let this just cook down until it becomes almost like a paste. 
I decided to go ahead and make up some fresh puff pastry. We're doing the rough puff. I have a full kind of tutorial on how to do it, which I can link down in the description box. We have butter, flour, salt, sugar in this bowl. And then I need to get out some milk and some ice water. My mom is getting ready to pipe the cake and make it look all pretty. This is butter. And I have a little flour that I'm gonna sprinkle on the butter. My mom originally put her cakes on a piece of cardboard when she was working on her turnstile. And that's what made it really easy for her to transfer her cake onto her cake plate. And now she's got a star tip and she is decorating around the base of the cake and then she will decorate around the top. I am grating the butter for the rough puff pastry. You can do this with a box grater, but it's a lot easier to do it with an electric grater. I'm gonna take flour and I'm gonna sprinkle it all around here to keep it from sticking. And then I'm going to put this back in the freezer so that it's nice and ice cold before we start rolling out our rough puff. The easiest way my mom has found to fill her piping bag is to put her piping bag in a glass of some sort, mason jar, just a regular glass, and fill her frosting in her pastry bag that way. And then she takes and she just frosts her cake. She does a great job. Perfect. Perfect! I'm carrying this out to the refrigerator in the garage so the heat doesn't affect it in this warm and toasty kitchen. I have my butter in the freezer and we need to prepare our beef tenderloin. You can see that the beef tenderloin is thicker on one end and it gets a lot thinner down here. And it's not gonna cook evenly if we do that. So we need to tuck that underneath and tie this together so that we have an even thickness so it cooks evenly. And I've never done this before, but we gotta tie up our beef so we can sear it. Do you need a finger to tie it? No, I think I... Watch I've watched your sleeves. Watch your sleeves. videos. You, you put it under and you loop it around twice and that's what holds it in place, so then you can tie it. Before we wrap this up in the puff pastry, we'll remove these strings. So you wanna do it every about inch and a half. When I ordered half a beef, you can request to have this part cut into steaks, which would be filet mignon steak but I wanted to try making beef wellington and that's why I had it cut this way into a roast. Mom, would you be willing to cut me one more piece of twine? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, look, it has a cutter right there. Oh. I was gonna tuck it there, but. And there we have it. Can you see how much this is cooked down? This is what we want. I'm gonna put this in a little container, put it in the fridge, and we'll come back to it tomorrow. This is the only opportunity you have to sear your meat, so you wanna get this really warm, or really seasoned. We are not going to touch that. We are not going to move it. We are going to let that sit on there for a good two or three minutes. We want it brown, not the color brown. We want it seared, brown, very dark. That's going to give us that Meyer reaction, that umami flavor, and that's what we want. While I'm searing the meat, my mom is making chocolate frosting to decorate the Star Wars cake with. This one is the uh, dairy free. The first ingredient says... No, the first directions. On the directions, the first ingredient says butter, softened, no substitutes. Guess what? <laughs> it's substitute with a vegan margarine. <laughs> My mom's It's a little softer. It'll be a little softer and I'll have to put it in the refrigerator. You can cut, do what you got to do in your own kitchen. I don't want to waste this flavor here. I'm going to take this off the heat. And I'm going to put our mushroom mixture back in here just so we can scrape up all those good bits. That's why you were supposed to do it in that other order, but we're just making it work for us. But I still don't want to waste that really good flavor. So back to the puff pastry. I wanted this to be in the freezer for a little while because it was only in the refrigerator with cold butter and 
you definitely want to work with as cold of butter as possible. So I'm going to put half the butter in here. And I have one third cup of milk, one third cup of water in here with some ice. And we're going to mix that in here. I'm not going to start with all of it. I'm going to start with a little and then we'll just add as needed. Are you decorating the brownies today or tomorrow? Uh, today, I think. Okay. So the puff pastry that I made it had been sitting in my refrigerator before I froze it for a little bit of time. And I just wanted, because that cut of meat is such a high quality cut of meat, I didn't want to risk it by that puff pastry not being its highest quality. So that's why I decided to go through the effort of making new puff pastry. You could certainly make this with store-bought if you wanted. What I'm doing here is taking out the hydrated part of the dough and then I'm adding just the liquid mixture to the dry part. This way you aren't over moistening your dough and making it gummy and sticky. And this was a light bulb moment when I learned this trick. I don't really remember. I think it might have been Food 52 blog where I learned this, but it definitely is a game changer in making pastry. As I was making this pastry, I was talking to my mom and we were talking about Ina Gardner and this feels like a meal that she would make for a dinner party or something like that. And she is my absolute favorite cooking personality. I love her cooking style. She's passionate about cooking things from scratch, high quality ingredients, and showing her friends and family her love through her cooking. And as a child watching her, she was definitely a huge inspiration and reason why I love to cook today. So I'm gonna wrap this in some saran wrap. I'm gonna put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes just to let that butter get really cold again. Same thing with this butter, it's going back in the freezer. This kitchen is very warm right now, that's why I wanna get this in the freezer. It almost feels like we're in the Great British Bake Off tent when it's summer. <laughs> that's how warm it is in here. <laughs> My mom is starting on making the Star Wars cake and I'm gonna start laminating our puff pastry. Okay, I'm cutting the uh, grandkids portion of this cake to make fins to make a spaceship. Somehow I think they're too big. Now I haven't glued this down yet. Oh, perfect. Okay, I started with a, a cutting board wrapped with two layers of parchment paper to make the cake plate. I trimmed up the gluten-free dairy-free everything for the grandkids. The tail portion will be theirs. This is a regular brownie. And I need to use their frosting to cement it all together so I don't, I don't want to accidentally grab the wrong frosting. Now you Star Wars fans, does this look like that spaceship? I'm not a Star Wars fan, I don't even know. I'm sure I've seen the movies, but I don't recall. Do you think These might be a little right? bit long. Do you think they're too long? Maybe, not that I know. Maybe Google a picture? Ah, that's, you know, that's what I usually do, and I didn't even think of it. Star Wars spaceship? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's blunt ends. Look, it's blunt end. Oh yeah. So just cut them. Yeah, just cut them right off right there. Okay, I googled it. They aren't points, they're blunt ends. I think a uh, six-year-old might think that's okay. Okay, this is gonna go, I'm gonna wrap this and it's gonna go in the freezer and we're gonna do two more flips on it. You do not want your puff pastry butter to get warm at any point. This is where the offset handle spatula comes in handy. You don't end up dragging, or I don't end up dragging my knuckles in the frosting. There are two colors of frosting here, and it's the exact same recipe for a buttercream frosting with cocoa powder. The only difference being the tail fins of this spaceship have no dairy. So it's a earth balance, 
it's a margarine butter replacement type product and rice milk instead of uh, milk. Other than that, it's the same vanilla, the same cocoa powder. Everything else is the same. So there's our spaceship. I'm going to get a um, Q-tip with some water to clean up the edges. How's that for a Star Wars? Does that look good? That looks awesome. You gonna put anything on it? Yeah, I'm gonna put the guys, but I have to clean up the edges first. Everything's done. The meat's done. Everything's done. Uh, I think so. Should we go to do the oh, wrap it? Yeah. I mean, we have to. We can't do that till tomorrow. We yeah. can't do the vegetables till tomorrow, and we don't have any asparagus. This was so cute. I was on the phone and I didn't realize my dad came to help my mom. He came home. He was gone for most of the day while we were working. And he is a retired dentist and doing these really fine detailed things are definitely something he enjoys doing. And so he got in the action and he decorated where the action figures went on this Star Wars cake. And I thought it was the most adorable thing and I'm glad that I caught it on camera. They tried putting the action figures on the cake and they didn't want to stand straight up so they ended up putting just a little bit of frosting on their feet and put it on the cake plate and then we put that in the refrigerator so that it would harden up and they would stand up straight. Save that frosting for graham crackers. <laughs> Did you hear us talk about that? No. Oh. <laughs> we talked about that that's your favorite way to eat, leftover frosting. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, this is good buttercream too. The other one is the meat. The other one tastes good. Both taste good. So my dad helped us kind of tidy up the kitchen. He's got the cake. Yeah. That's his cake. <laughs> and my mom got the Star Wars cake all done. We're getting everything put in the refrigerator and then we will be back tomorrow to assemble everything. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. You're going to see this whole entire dinner come together tomorrow. I'll be back here around, dinner's at four, so I'll probably be back here around like 1.30ish because we have to assemble the whole beef wellington. All the sides are basically done, we just have to cook them in the oven. It's been such a fun day, <laughs> we've really had fun. One of my very favorite things to do is to fix food for the people I love. And we were supposed to do this two times already oh, and this got yes. postponed, so this is really nice that this party did not get canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. So we're gonna go head to dinner. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate that. If you wanna see more of cooking with me and my mom, I'll put some of those cooking videos right here. You can go enjoy those. We but have so much fun together. We do. <laughs> and if you're new, please consider subscribing so you don't miss us putting all this together. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye-bye.